All right, let's get to the real deal, Holy Field. So we finna sit back and be educated. You know what I'm saying? Cause that's what we do over here. We're gonna, you know, we get that 2K stuff in there. Cause we still like 2K. We like it enough to, to keep our ears to the windows and listen at the door sometime. And we peeping through the blinds. You know, we still, we, we might not fuck with 2K right now, but we still looking over the fence. And hey, what you doing over there? Uh, what you doing? So yeah, we still keeping our ears and eyes open on what's going on with 2K. But let's get to the shit. Y'all see what that say right there? Destroyed by distraction. <laughs> Hit that be 2K? Hit 2K be destroying you? I don't know. Let's hear what my man got to say, man. Listen, the link will be in the description. I've been rocking with this dude for about three months now. And man, let me tell you, that helped me a lot of ways, bro. I have learned a lot of rhythm I have learned about a lot of principles with, and I was about to say the rhythm principle. But one of the principles he speak on a lot is the 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 principle of how I forgot the name of the principle. Oh, the price principle, the price principle. And he may speak on this here. If you don't know what the price principle is, go look it up. Uh, but yeah, so we're gonna get started with this man. Don't let your distraction destroy your destiny. Let's see what you got to say, man. And I hope you don't step away. I understand that you like my 2K content. I understand you rock with me for 2K. But let me, let me be a brother. Let me be a brother. Let me be a friend. Let me say, hey, from my heart, let me introduce you to something that could possibly help you in your real life. Fuck your 2K life. That 2K shit. You, so you telling me you're going to choose the bullshit of 2K over this right here? So you can watch my 2K content where we know it's bullshit. But we still going to entertain ourselves. You feel me? We still going to get our little drugs. But you going to leave when we play this? Don't leave when we play this. This is shit right here that can possibly help you, save you, or push you in the right direction, or push you to the next level. Let's get it, man. Have you ever wondered what separates the best in class or the best in categories from the rest in class or the rest in category? Why is I'm there only on, one Michael on, Jordan in a lifetime? Have you ever wondered that? Why is there only one Jack Nicholas or one Tiger Woods or one Steve Jobs or one Elon Musk in like a whole lifetime? Have you ever wondered why, why is there only one Sam Walton? Can anyone like the fact is, regardless of what the arena is, it doesn't matter if it's sports, it doesn't matter if it's business, it doesn't matter if it's medicine, it doesn't matter if it's science, it doesn't matter if it's education, it doesn't matter. In any arena, there are only a handful of stars and even fewer superstars, and there are even fewer people that we could call legendary. How many of y'all would agree with that, right? But you're about to discover what it takes if you want to be a star, if you want to be a superstar. You know what I love about this right here? That's what I mean by... Our parents may can't give us this game. You see, you know, people, they're at a seminar right now. Type one if you've ever been to a seminar. Type two if you've never been to a seminar. I would go, I'm going to type two. My hand going up for two. I've never been to one. But I have been to plenty on YouTube. I have been to plenty on YouTube. <laughs> Tell me, see, we in the class today. You may not have ever been to one in real life. Well, okay, you may not ever been to one physically, but this internet can be used to where we can actually be at seminars now. I've never been to one physically. I never paid to go to one. Um, I think I definitely need to attend one. My boy said he's been watching seminars for three years, though. So he never, okay, my boy, uh, my boy right here, uh, Joey, he been to one. That's amazing. I, I do plan on going to one. You feel me? I do plan on going to one. But I'd have been to plenty on YouTube. So we can't, that's why I say we can't keep making excuses like we can't get to this information. And this information is out here for us to get to. So we can't keep blaming our conditions on our past on our parents, on our friends, because this information is available for us to get into these seminars. Right now, we are at the seminar. Or if you want to be legendary. 
And I thought I wasn't going to write on the board, but I was wrong. So I'm going to let Karina or Marima or somebody fix that board up for me. Just go to the next page for me. So, so understand this, that, that you're going to discover like how to become the best of the best in category, the best of the best in class. Like you will be, like whatever your arena is, you will set yourself so far apart from everybody else, you will have no competition. Does that sound interesting to anybody besides me? That okay, sound so, I, and I, by the way, here's what's fascinating about this whole thing. Like, is it really possible for anyone to be a superstar? I believe that barring some kind of mental impairment, that the answer is a resounding yes. Almost anyone can become a star, a superstar, or even legendary, but almost no one will. Hmm. Talk. 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 Here's what's fascinating to me. That's, that's a bar. My mom taught me and my brothers when we were in elementary school how to be the best of the best in category. And here's what she said. Well, before I tell you what she said, I want to tell you about this principle. I, I didn't realize that that's what she had taught me. I did not know that this video was going to be, he's going to talk about the principle. What the principle I just told you of? The price principle. And I think he about to talk about the price principle. Until I discovered the scientific principle that's so mind-blowing. Like, every time I think about it, like, it gives me chills. So the scientific principle is called Price's Law. Price's Law. Price's Law. Here's what Price's Law states. It's going to sound like word salad at first, but I'm going to break. I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it a couple of times. Crazy. So don't be nervous. <laughs> but I'm about to show you. I'm about to pull back the curtain on what it takes for you to become the best of best in category. Here it is. Price's Law states that 50% of the production of any domain is produced by the square root of that domain. Hmm? I know you didn't get it. I saw you not get it. So I'm going to do it again. And once again, this is a reaction. I'm going to let him tell it to you, but I like to use it. I like to give you a demonstration from our background. Most of us are 2K hoopers. 50% of the points, the game go to 21 in a 3v3 part game. Because it's three players, one person will produce most of the points in a 3v3 game. That's the price is low. If you have a sibling, um, let's say you have two siblings, so it's three of y'all. One person will produce most of the work in that house. If you notice when you say, when your parents tell you to clean up, it's usually going to be one person that don't do shit. But if you don't all, if the house is not cleaned up, even though you was cleaning up, but that one person didn't do shit. Now he getting credit for y'all cleaning up or she getting credit. Um, and or let's say y'all don't, let's say you didn't do what you're supposed to do in time. Now all y'all got to get an ass whooping because this one person. So the price is low says that in 2K, based on however many number it is, like I said, three, you would see anonymous 2K TV would score most of the points. Or my center would score most of the points. That's, I never knew that. And when I first heard it, it was so amazing because whenever I have had a job, I have always been in the category of the percentage that produced the most of the work. And I find that so amazing. At one of my, at one of my last establishments, I worked in a tower. Um, I told y'all I worked for the Aqua, the states of Aqualinas, right beside the um, Trump Tower. But um, so these are multi-millionaires and billionaires. So we would have to do counts, you know, security rounds. We would have to walk, take the elevator all the way up to the top, to the top, to the top, to the top, to the top. 50, 60 some floors. And then you have to count going down the stairs. You have to go count the fire, fire extinguishes every night. When they would go back and look at the numbers that who was doing the majority of the work, there would be eight officers 
only three people, two to three people would do most of the counts. Everybody else would have two and three floors, maybe five floors. Um, wow, you will have somebody like Anonymous 2K TV and this older man, we doing all the floors every time our round is coming. We're not half doing it. But guess what? Do you know who the supervisor was? It was one of the people that did less work. Did y'all know there was actual law behind this? And if you go, if you ever read the 48 Laws of Power, it teach you this principle as well, but it don't say it's the principle of price law. But it tells you how to get over and manipulate people to get them to do all the work. But come to find out, this is actually a law. This is a, actually a principle of the universe. This is a real thing, but he can explain it much better. But I wanted to show you in a 2K format because that's the game we play. 50% of the production of any domain is produced by the square root. Yeah, okay, I'm glad you asked. This guy right here is named Myron Gooden. The link to this video, Golden. Myron Golden. The link to this video is in the description. So if y'all want to just dip out of here and go watch this, I would rather you do so. But if you want to hang out with me, cool. But if you want to leave me to go get this great gym, the source, the knowledge, the information, all I'm doing is sharing it. But if you want to go and watch it from the source, that's even better that domain and it doesn't matter if it's a garden guess what once you finish that video you're gonna click on another one of his videos tomato plants or if it's an organization with salespeople or if it's a professional sports team with points it's in the link 50 the percent of the production King. of any domain will be produced by the square root of that Hold domain on. what is i don't want y'all to miss what he said i apologize so i'm gonna be quiet for this but check the description king the link to that video 50 percent of the production of any domain is produced by the square root of that domain. And it doesn't matter if it's a garden with tomato plants, or if it's an organization with salespeople, or if it's a professional sports team with points. 50% of the production of any domain will be produced by the square root of that domain. What does that mean? Here's what it means. That means if you have two tomato plants, 50% of the tomatoes will be produced by two, pe two, of, the, two of those plants. You have four. two salespeople, 50% of the sales will be produced by two salespeople. If you have two people on a team, 50% of the points will be produced by two people. I mean, if you have four people, I, I said if you have two, I meant if you have four. If you have four tomato plants, 50% will be produced by two. If you have four salespeople, 50% of the sales will be produced by two. If you have four um, people on a team, 50% of the points will be produced by two people. Yes. Well, that makes sense because that's half, right? That, Price's law makes sense at small numbers. The bigger the numbers get, the less sense it makes hmm? until you think about it. But what happens when you take a number like, okay, two times two is four, three times three is nine. So if you have three tomato plants, 50% of the tomatoes are not produced by four and a half plants. 50% of the tomatoes are produced by three plants. 50% of the sales are produced by three salespeople. 50% of the points are scored by three people on a team of nine. What? Oh, it gets more better. If you have five, 25, 25 tomato plants, 50% of the tomatoes are going to be produced by five plants. 50% of the sales by five salespeople. 50% of the points by five people on the team. Whew. And what, what makes this beautiful is not only can you see it, in your household, you can see it in your school. But what make it ultimately so beautiful to me that nature can show you this. I did not know. I thought each seed has its own sprouts. I didn't understand that a tomato. is producing other tomatoes, not that each individual tomato came up as an individual, but came from, let's say, this particular tomato. I didn't understand that. I thought that was amazing that nature could show me a price low. Like this is a real thing. 
And then I was like, okay. Then I started looking and I saw a thing about 2K. I said, damn, I can see it in 2K. If I play 5v5, tell me you don't play 5v5. When you look at this stat sheet, nine times out of 10, two people will have majority of the points. You ain't trying to give it to them two people. You just playing the game. You trying to feed everybody. But somehow, out of them five players, two people always have majority of the points. I said, damn, this shit is real. This is this isn't making sense. Okay, well, let me make it make sense. If you have a business, a corporation, you got 100 salespeople, 50% of the sales will be made by 10 people. And anybody who owns a business knows I'm telling the truth. 50% of the sales will be made by, fit, fought by 10 salespeople, and the other half of the sales will be made by 90. When I had my own pallet business, I had three employees. You know who did majority of the work? Me. <laughs> it was me and two other people. I did majority of the work. Price is low. This is why income inequality cannot be solved by government. You can't legislate Price's Law. I, I think it's so fitting that this, the guy who discovered this, his last name was Price. I think his name was Richard, and then he had all these long middle names, Price, right? <laughs> last name Price. I think it's fascinating. You know why? Because if you want to be one of the best in class, mm. best in category, mm. you have to be willing to pay the price to become that. Man, it's like, it's almost like God has said, I'm going to make sure this dude who discovers this, his last name is Price. <laughs> Anonymous want to be one of the number one to, once again, I use these videos to, to paint a narrative because I know most of us are 2K player and I know we can see it clearer when we, when we use something that we're familiar with. And plus, I want to talk anyway. I want to listen too. I want to talk too. Okay. Anonymous want to be the number one 2K guy. How did I do it? I did the thing that everybody feared to do or wasn't in a position to do because of their household. Anonymous out screamed you, I out played you. You can play five hours a day while I can play 20 hours a day. And I had a, a girlfriend that uh, wasn't on my neck. She made me dinner while I chased this dream. See, if you want to be the best of your category, you simply have to output the next man. It's a competition. And that's why I tell you about 2K. The competition that we all try to compete with one another will continue to help people to buy VC. And that's the gold mine that 2K has. Type one if you understand what I'm saying. I outperform all my competitors. Whether they were trying to compete or not, I put myself in your face more than they did, even if there was better talent than me. See, it's not always about the talent, it's about who can get the attention. AKA, that's where you see our brother EJ come in at. There's many people that would say EJ is not on their level, talent-wise, skill-wise, but he's able to get himself in your face longer than the guy that claims he doesn't have lost the game in three months. It's a difference. If you have 10,000, if you have a business with 10,000 offers, 50% of your revenue will come from 100 offers. So what's the significance of this? Here's the principle. So here, I'm going to tell you what my mom said, then I'm going to tell you what I discovered based on this. Here's what my mom said, and I'm going to show it to you in the Bible. So you'll know, like, this is just reconfirmed and reconfirmed over and over and over and over and over, and over again. Yes. You ready? Everybody ready? Let me hear Sam ready. ready. Okay, here we go. Here's what my mom said. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Mm. Do you know how small of a population in the mm. world there is that practice that? Yes. 
very it's my reaction video i told you the link is in the description if you want to just go but i feel like i can connect with you too you know so because i have examples I find it so amazing. That there is so much information out here. As a black man, it's easy for me to one up the average black man. I didn't want to say it, but I said it before. I'm not ashamed to say it. As a black man, because of the destruction that have been placed on the black community, the chances of the average black man pulling himself away from gossip. Like, can I say it? Should I say it? No, let me see. Should I say this? Most of y'all gonna go watch something else that's gonna be gossip. Not gonna benefit you. See, I'm able to put myself in a position to say, let me force myself to listen to this man. Because I'm going to give it my all to change my condition, I will be ahead of half of the black men. I'm already... Do you know just making... This is not what I make, but I heard this recently. If you make 60000 as a black man, you're already above half of your brothers. You're already past them in a financial level just making 60000 Just making 60000 And you know how easy it is to make 60000 You can go get $60,000 from, a, from, a, from, from McDonald's. You can get 60000 from Walmart. You can get 60000 from a convenience store. Just having a regular job can put you ahead of the average black man. Because the average black man is not going to pull himself into this box and say, I need to learn, I need to study, I need to, I need to change, I got to stop hanging out, I got to stop going out. This is why we so far behind as black men and women because we so caught up in the entertainment while everybody else is saying, I'll be entertained, but let me go ahead and disappear for six months. Let me go disappear for two years. Then I can come back and be entertained all I want because now I have the career. Now I have the financials. Anonymous 2K TV is behind on a lot of things, but I'm ahead of a lot of my peers because I chose a different route. As I chose to disappear for a couple months. I chose to listen to men like this. No matter how sleepy it made me when I first started tuning in. Because I didn't understand what the fuck they was talking about. But now I can listen. I can be around this environment. I can indulge. I can consume this content daily, nightly. That's it. This is what I consume 24 seven. You don't believe me? Ask her. She'll tell you, I can call her right now. All I do is consume this type of content. Do I slip up from time to month and listen to um, some big extra plug? Listen to my young Dolph? It hit me for a moment, and then I snap out of it and get back on what I'm supposed to be on. Hey, cause look, I'm a work in progress. I'm a work in progress. So for that moment, I get that young dog uh, on God. No plan, nigga. I hit it. I hit my little job. Boom, snap out of it, nigga. Cause how did dog get to where he was? Okay. So do you want to get to where Dolph was or do you want to just indulge in his content? Hell no, nigga. 
Hey, um, Cat just said something to me today. And y'all know we just watched that video of that brother quitting his job to do YouTube full time. And it just made me think about last night I had to go to a dinner for my one of my clients. And um Cat that he put up a post about how he's so blessed that he was able to employ all these people. He made an Instagram post and like, man, he got over 80 employees and him and his wife is so blessed. And then she was like, that's good for him, but you could be doing the same thing. But you are a subject of, you are a piece of his product. That's like, damn. Yeah, you got your own business, but you want to make sure you take care of them. And they blessed that they were able to put y'all in a position. But you could be putting people in position if you was to stay locked in on your own stuff. Damn. That's, that's, hmm. So that's how I end up going live today. That's how I end up checking on my other um, business that I got going on today. And then I say, okay, well, this one, I can, you know, am I putting my all into my own shit? See, we can celebrate people quitting their job or stop doing something that they know is going to be detrimental to them and start doing things that are going to uplift them. We can celebrate that for them, but can we do it for ourselves? Are you clapping for me right now that I'm getting it? Well, stay, stop clapping for me. Look in the mirror. Clap for yourself. So why my client posts this Instagram post about how he so happy and he happy celebrating, and that's cool. We clap for him. Okay, when am I going to clap for me? When can I go and be an a equal? Right now, I'm his employee. I'm okay with being his employee. But am I okay? Do I get to indulge into a The, 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 the content that I want to bring to my community, bring to my brothers and sisters? Do I get to go pass out turkeys when my client may need me and he want to pass out turkeys? So I got to go protect him while he pass out his turkeys, but I want to pass out turkeys. I want to fix plates. Well, how you want to do that? You on the clock. You got to go get him, protect him so he can give out the turkeys. That's your job. And I'm not saying I have an issue with my job. What I'm trying to get you to see is Cat just brought it to my attention that you got a business too. You can invite him to dinner for your business. But you ain't thinking like that. Because you're thinking about going to his dinner for his success. Then we got to flip our mind and start clapping for us, start inviting people to our corporation. Yes, I'm having a dinner for all my employees tonight. Well, you're not in that lane if you're not in that lane, if you're especially not thinking about being in that lane. Hey, wonderful making sense to you. Let's start clapping for us. And what I tell y'all all the time, like I just told you, my boy say he got to leave soon. He ain't going to be able to watch the full thing with me. Bye. And I say that to my brother because you just watching me succeed. When are you going to go succeed yourself? And see, the things I'm saying, people wouldn't say out loud. They wouldn't say what I'm saying out loud. How many times have I told you to cut my screen off and cut yours on? You think they going to say this? I get called stupid for doing the things I'm doing. You gonna really tell them to cut them shit off and go turn their shit on? Well, because I'm saying, how you gonna preach it but don't really want them to be it? There's a lot of people gonna preach success, but as soon as we start touching success, they start not answering the phone. They start doing little shit that like, I thought you were happy I made it. Damn. I didn't know you really was going to go for it, though. 
I didn't know you really was going to, I thought you were just, like, I was just trying to educate you. I ain't know you was going to motherfucking go out there and get your CDLs and start driving trucks for real. I ain't know you was going to go get your trade and start being somebody for real. I ain't know you was going to actually stop being a, a broke ass nigga for real. I, like, I thought you still going to be that little bum so I can come on like, damn, boy, y'all still ain't got it together yet. Now I'm coming over here, nigga, you riding nice, you looking good, you got the family looking good. Ah, damn, nigga, you okay, huh? Oh, that's why you answer the phone no more, nigga? I thought you was happy I made it. See, a lot of these content creators, and I'm not saying my brother right here, I'm saying a lot of these people, they want you to indulge in their content, but they don't want you to create no content. Type one for making sense. It's so minuscule, it might not be able to be measured under a microscope. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. Like, I thought she was just being Socratic, because my parents were very Socratic, and they didn't say things outright. They would just, they would give us hints, and we'd have to figure it out. Right? You'd walk in, you'd and see, see, your mom, see my mom for the first day. Boy, time of day is due to a dog. Hi, mom. Like, she's like, like, you would even say hi to your dog. I'm your mother. Speak to me. Right? So that's how our parents taught us. Anyway, so I didn't know she was giving me the, I, I didn't realize she was giving me the keys to the castle when she said, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. I didn't know she was doing that. And it came from scripture. That's why I go hard when I do shit. So here's shit. the lesson. Let me tell you the lesson I we get, learned. Then I'm going to read the verse. Then I'm going to I, I turn into, I, I, when I start something, I turn into a, a cycle. I key in on it. I, I, I. I get like a canine. When I got back into the gym, I'm a canine. I'm a canine now. When I got back on my YouTube shit, I don't go to sleep at one o'clock. I gotta make sure I got these videos uploaded. I gotta make sure I got all those videos getting ready to go. I gotta make sure I'm checking my stocks. I gotta make sure I'm looking at that. I gotta make sure I'm like watching this. I gotta make sure I'm checking on my clients. I, nah, I'm keying in. That's how you get to be that's how you get to be more valuable than one would assume. Because see, when I got one license, I got two licenses. All you need is one. Now I'm going to make sure I get the other one too, just in case. I'm, a, I'm keying in. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to increase the value just on that part. I'm going to get all this. Yeah, yeah, they're going to add to my value. I'm keying in. I'm not just going to work on the arms and the chest and the shoulders and the back. I'm going to work on the legs too. I'm keying in. I'll tell you what I've extracted from this and what I've, what I've, what I've been able to apply <clears throat> and I've found that it is so true. If you decide you're going to be one of the best in class, one of the best in category, you'll have almost no competition because most people are not willing to pay that price. Facts. In Facts. any arena. They ain't willing to stay okay. up late at night. So here's what they I learned from Bryce's law. They ain't willing to get up early in the morning. A hundred salespeople producing half of the sales of a 10,000 person sales army. Here's what I learned from that. Mediocrity scales exponentially. Average scales exponentially. Okay scales exponentially. Excellence only scales incrementally. Because so few people are willing to pay the price. Mm. That's crazy. That's why That's... when you think of actors, there's the number of A-list actors is going to always be smaller than the B and the C-list oh, actors. Oh, man. Why? The singers, same thing. It doesn't matter. And, and God laid it out for us in Scripture so vividly and beautifully, clearly. And I didn't realize that this was the principle until, like, like I... Once again, this is my reaction video. I ain't gonna keep telling you now. I'm gonna pause when I want to pause. <laughs> but um, I know y'all, my supporters, you rocking with me. But when I release these videos on the YouTube, it be dudes that come in and be like, "Yo, just let the video play. Shut up." Um, I lost my train of thought. Let me see. Can I get it back? Let me see, can he touch on something that brought that thought to mind anyway? Let me see. Let me go back to. Be smaller than the B and the C list actors. Why? The singers. Okay. Sing
Y'all see what I just did? I'm gonna hold this thought, but if I lose this thought, I can go back and rewind the video because for me to get that thought, he had to say something. So I lost the thought, but all I did was rewind the video and he said something again that brought the thought back. I be hitting y'all with some shit if you just listen to what I'm saying, though. All right, um, the reason there are so few new uh, new content creators in YouTube and Twitch when it comes to 2K because everybody assumes that they have to copy when it's already successful. Ding, 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 ding. Why is anonymous? Why did anonymous 2K TV blow up in 2K? I was different. Team working defense. Team working defense. Team working defense. From the ISO. Not the pick and roll. <laughs> How did I blow up in Pro-Am? Team working defense. Calling plays from the ISO. See, they might not give me my credit, but Anonymous made the ISO in Pro-Am popular. I got friends that might testify, or associates in 2K, that remember. They might say, yeah, niggas weren't really, niggas may was doing it, but we didn't know nobody that was doing it. And if they was, they probably wasn't live streaming. When it came to live streaming, Anonymous made 5v5 ISO play calling. I was the only one doing it. I was the only one pulling random guys from the Twitch chat saying, <clears throat> I'm so good of a point guard. I'm going to pull four guys from my Twitch chat and we're going to take pro M by storm. And we did that. I blew up off of that. Then I was able to go to park, do the same thing. This nigga called him plays on the three V threes. I was different. The reason it's so hard for y'all to grow in 2k because you haven't been creative enough to stand out. If you have, but well, some of my G's in here right now. If you find a way, let me give you an idea. Let's say you're a 2K streamer. But you sing every time you hit a jump shot. Okay. Let's say every time you win a game, your girlfriend come on and start reading off the subs. See, what I'm trying to give you examples of how you can be different. I'm just, I'm saying little shit, but use your mind to think bigger. I'm just saying little bit of shit. Use your mind to think bigger. You have to have something that's different about you that is different from Anonymous 2K TV. That's different from all these other guys that's already blew up. You thinking that you can go repeat what the next person has done, which you only gonna get a small percentage of supporters when if you want to go create your own lane, now that's where the abundance come in at. Now that's where you get your 100,000 views. Now that's where you get your million subscribers. See, you only get that many subscribers when you are different. How would a copycat get the same love as the creator? How many of y'all told me you watched the movie The Cross? The TV show. The TV show on Amazon Prime, The Cross. It's not The Cross. Cross. Alex Cross, that's his name. He's a detective. The serial killer in this TV show. Okay, I'm going to tell it to you. I was following it. You should have went and seen it. Because he's going to make my point, so I got to spoil it. The, the, the serial killer is copying 12 killers, psycho killers throughout the world that have happened in real life. He's copying them, recreating their crimes, and recreating the victims to match the same victim that they killed in their crime. All right? So, well, he, he matching it to the, to the actual killer that was killed by the United States, you know, after they got caught and had to go get the lethal injection and all that stuff. So, he's recreating that. Guess what? So, he wanted to go out with a bang, as in... I just recreated all these 12 serial killers. Yes. 
I don't care if I die. I want the world to know what I just did. Guess what they did to this clown? This nigga, Alex Cross, is so good at what he do. He was able to take that nigga work and act like it never happened. So he wanted to be charged for all 12 of these kills that he had recreated. They only charged him for one kill. That nigga went crazy. He just, he copycat the original killers and tried to recreate their shit and come to find out at the end of all of it, he only got charged for one kill. When he wanted to be famous for recreating these serial killers moments and, and killing people, and he got charged for one, he lost his mind. He could, you, that's not right. You got to charge me. Those are my kills. Those are my kills. Going crazy. But what I'm telling you, being a copycat only gets you a small taste of gratitude. He's still going to get a kill, but he ain't going to get them 12 other, he ain't going to get them 11 other kills that he wanted. So he getting charged for one. So you wasting your time being a copycat of these successful creators. That's why it's taking you so long to blow up. And I be giving it to y'all. I be giving it to y'all. That's why it's taking you so long to blow up. That's why you taking so long to blow up because you're the, the version of the authentic version of you having quit. You, he's still out here. She's still out here. See, you're not being pushed by the, by the, by the corporation. See, it's easy for celebrities to copy each other because they are being pushed by a corporation. Type one if you understand what I'm kicking to you. It's easy for a sexy red and an ice spice and a Megan Thee Stallion, a Beyonce. They got a corporation, a system. You have just you. So you think you can do the same thing that these celebrities doing? I can just go copy this person right here. Don't work like that for your lifestyle. See, you on the lower end. You don't have no push behind you to make the world keep listening to your song, keep listening to your song. Okay, well, I think I like her. Of course you like her now because you had to listen to the song 1,500 times. Social programming. I'd be kicking it to you. I'd be kicking it. Same thing. It doesn't matter. And, and God laid it out for us in Scripture so vividly and beautifully clearly. And I didn't realize that this was the principle until, like... Like, I, when I get something, when I get, like, I'm like a dog on a bone when I discover something. And I'm like, but wait a minute, what, but what about this? And what about, and what about, and what about, and what about? That's me, okay? So I'm going to read it to you. By the way, the person who wrote this in Scripture was the best of the best in class and the best of the best in category. It was King Solomon. Here's what God told him. He said, because you've asked this thing, I'm going to bless you in ways that nobody's been blessed before you and nobody will be blessed. He said, so the detective... Hold on him himself. Okay, let me, for the people that, you know, I apologize that I even, because see, Jacko, don't get lost in that. That ain't the message. But but I'm going to give it to you since I brought it up. No, the detective, they're going to not tell the world what they did. Even though it's illegal, the detective don't want to let this killer get no glorification for killing when that was his whole purpose of he wanted to be famous, and he wanted the world to know that he copied these, these killers. In his mind, these are successful people. They was murderers. They were psychopaths, and he wanted to recreate them. He wanted to recreate their, their killing life. Like, he created a victim. He would go catch a victim and recreate that scenario, and he wanted the fame and saying, like, look at how great I am. I was able to do the same thing they did and get away with it. So he had 11 serial killers that he had copied, 12. But he was only going to get credit for one. Because if he would have got credit for all, then he would have completed his lifelong dream. To die and go out with a bang. I was able to do all of their crimes and never get noticed. And he did not get noticed. He had got away with 11 before they actually caught him. They didn't catch him until the 12th one. But he came out and started speaking to the people on his 12th kill because now he was ready for his credit. Damn. I really did it. I killed 12 people 
I'm the greatest ever. That's what he wanted. So the detective, they said, we're not going to give you credit. We're going to tell the public that you only killed one person. It's illegal, but you get to defeat this psychopath that was on the killing verge, and his only verge was to say that he killed these people. So do you want him to go out on a bang? No. But guess what? They still wanted to get a family some 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 uh, closure, so they had this other guy that was working with the serial killer to now pretend like he was a serial killer or not necessarily the serial killer, but give the family some closure by telling them little bits of things of how they died. The other victims. I hope that I hope I I hope I cleared it up for you. I'm sorry for the people that you know. We trying to be educated. I I brought the subject up, so you know. After you, there will not be one like unto you among all the kings all your days. And then we go and we read a little bit further in First Kings chapter three and First Kings chapter four, and we read in First Kings chapter ten that the scripture says that Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. He was the best of the best in class and the best of the best in category. How good was he? He was so good that the scripture tells us that all of the kings of the earth, all of the monarchs around the earth, came to Solomon and paid him to learn his wisdom. So maybe, yeah, I get it. The price is high to become the best of the best in category. The price is high to become the best of the best in class. Oh, but the payoff is so worth it. Here's what it says. Mm. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. In other words, you don't need a particular set of gifts, talents, and skills that was imparted to you at birth in order for you to be one of the best of the best in category. Here's what you need to do. You need to make a decision. Mm. Oh. The word decide comes from the Latin root de, which means of or from, side, which means to cut. It means you cut yourself off from any other possibility but being the best of the best in class. And, kind of, and, and, and your objective is not even to become the best. Your objective is to become as good as you possibly can be. I, like best doesn't mean better than somebody else. Right. Best means best to your capability. Like that's why when people say, Myron, how much money do you want to make? I want to make as much as I can. Now, I'm not that greedy, okay? I'm not, it has nothing to do with, I mean, that, that may be, if you wanted to make as much money as you could, that might be why you wanted to do it. But I want to do it because I want to max out every area of my life. When I ask you how smart do you, children, you want your children, I don't want to make that much money just enough to be comfortable. How smart do you want your children to be? Not that smart, just smart enough to be comfortable. How long hmm. do you want to live? Not that long, just long enough to be comfortable. Hmm. It's such I a see, goofy lie. I see what he's saying. I see what he's saying. I don't want to make that much money just enough to be comfortable. It's such a goofy and By the way, if you only want to make enough money to be comfortable, that's one of the most selfish goals you can have. Because mm. when you come across the man who's fallen among thieves, how are you going to take care of him when you can't even take pay your I told y'all, me and my dad talked about life insurance the other day. And y'all, everybody ain't where you going to be. So when I say that, I say my dad is not where I'm at right now mentally. Because my dad is older. He has had his ways for 60 some years. And I'm 32. And I'm coming into a new way of life, a new way of learning, a new way of doing things. So me and my dad is talking about life insurance. And my, and my dad tell me how much his life insurance thing is. And I'm like, we got to up that. Now, to him, that sounded crazy. What do you mean we got to up that? That's not enough. Why would we settle for a couple thousand when we have the ability to pay for a higher policy to where when you pass, we can get you the proper thing or however you want to go, and then you still have enough money left over for your family? I know I just hit a soft spot. See, we don't want to talk about that. So me and my daddy started getting on this conversation, and it got a little, it's got a little icky because it's like, I don't plan on dying. Did I say you plan on dying? No, nah, because guess what? In my life insurance policy, I'm making sure that it's enough for everybody to be able to progress because what is the number one wealth generation? It's death. 
But see, every other community know this. Every other race of people understand this. Death is how you get rich. Because death comes to us all, and it's a lot of money that can be come to your family so you don't have to continue to live in these conditions. But because you're selfish, you're like, I just got enough to be buried. What? You just got enough to be buried? That's how we thinking? That's how we thinking. We're not thinking about the kids, the grandkids, the sisters, the uncles, the people that you can possibly put in a better situation through your death. I know. I know that's a little sticky for a lot of y'all. I know that's a little sticky, but that's called real life. Your light bill. <clears throat> How you gonna bless your mama and your daddy and your grandmama and your children? Look at my butt. My dog just said, damn right. When I die, my son got like 1.5. Hello. Come on, man. But like I said, me and my dad had that conversation. I'm like, man, we got to get a better policy than that. And I'm not looking for you to die. I'm not looking for you to die because we talking about insurance. You the one told me. You the one told me we need to focus and need to get that life insurance stuff right. But now when I say, well, what's the numbers? Now you want, oh, what you, what you asking about? You asking about the numbers? Yeah, what's the numbers? How much, how much would the policy pay out when you die? Oh, a couple thousand, just enough for me to be buried. What? That's enough for you to be buried. So now that you go, you feel like you get to check out. Well, y'all got to make it on your own. You, boy, that's some selfish shit. You about to pass away. Are you close to a stage of passing away? And I'm not looking for, listen, I can die before my father. You know what I'm saying? Come on, bro. So we, 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 we don't think about stuff like that. We, 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 we selfish to a point of that conversation because we like, and well, you got to fend for yourself now. Fend for myself. You just passed away, ain't leaving that but a $2,000? Man, you tripping, dog. Come on, man even take care you can't even pay your water bill <clears throat> and ask someone to take it like, not leaving wanting to make enough money. to get by is one of the most selfish That's and crazy right not so you intelligent got a new goals you can have financially okay why because all you got to be do a to warehouse manager and cars and stuff break down is keep on living oh. and warehouse manager dog that's the 50 to 60 range right there got to get that money So you don't when it, when it breaks down, you don't want to have enough money to replace it. You want to have Man, to wait. Jay. The air conditioner goes out in Florida in the summertime. Well, we gonna have to just and, wait till we save enough money. And you know, you know, like the selfish part of us to say, LJ ain't gonna be able to spend one point five. Okay, so we saying the person that's gonna be taking care of LJ can't have nothing. That's how some of us will look at it. Well, I mean, my baby ain't spending no one point five. Well, we know the baby ain't gonna spend one twenty five, but at least. The person that's doing this got to have something. Come on, man. My boy said 300 a month on the policy. It Listen, but it's worth it, though, because you understand that. I don't want my son to be half taken care of. You know what I'm saying? I don't want my son to just have enough. No, I want my son to be able to enjoy what his father left for him. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But well, see, we got older parents. I'm going to say for me, my, my father haven't clicked on that yet. But we had a long conversation. And, he, and, and you know what? He was like, okay, well, you can just get your own policy. That was okay, but it still wasn't. It's like you're not accepting what you're saying. You're saying that you would rather me just get the policy on you than that let's increase your policy. Because in his mind, it still sound a little like, Damn, nigga, I'm really gonna have to die for to give you some money. I'm really gonna have to. I'm really gonna like that's the way, that's kind of like what you're saying. You saying like, so you don't want to when you die. You don't. You just want me to have enough to bury you. That's some selfish shit. That's some selfish shit, bro. That's some selfish shit, dog. Fixing sweat in the meantime. The scripture says. A wise man foreseeth evil and hideth himself, but the foolish pass on and are punished. Anyway. Good hours. 
Oh, so what? Said, 62? She, that's, that's the best to verse, me. Uh, 12, I love that 62. For man also knoweth not his time. As the fish, as the fishes that are taken in an evil net, as the bird that is caught in a snare, so are the sons of men stared in an evil time when it falls that's suddenly it. upon them. That's it, Jay. So the that's scripture it. says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might, because you're dying. There's no work, nor device, nor service in the gra grave whither thou goest. Work, like, put everything you can into everything you, put everything you've got into everything you do because you're going to die. And when, you're when you die, here's what that means, game over. And it's not Mario Brothers, you don't get another life. <laughs> well, say, be your fire. And then he says, but do everything you can, not just because you're going to die, but do everything you can, like put everything you've got into everything you do because you will beat people who are more talented than you. I'm telling you, you went out over people who are richer than you. You yes. will beat people who had more, yes. more like natural advantages than you. Just it's just like dudes talking about the dating world. Dudes assume that because they rich men have all this money that they have great success with women. No, they don't. Money don't. The guy that can make the woman laugh, make the woman feel comfortable has a better chance than this dude with millions of dollars. Because a lot of times, these guys that have millions of dollars, they lose charisma. They lose connection. They lose conversation because their life is on fast pace speed at all the time. I ain't got no time to court you. I ain't got no time to rap to you, talk to you, get sweet up in your ear. What you gonna do? I'm a multi-millionaire. Not saying all of them, but I've seen a lot of them that work on a fast pace scale, moving, 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 moving. Ain't got time to be talking to no woman. Ain't got time to be be trying to court her. And guess what? That's how you get a lot of hoes because they know that these guys with oh my god, I'm hitting some pointers, I'm hitting some pointers. A lot of hoes are created because the man that have the money don't have time to court them. So all he can do is buy a bag, and that's for him to get the pussy with. But see, guess what? Now you see the guy that working a nine to five job, he different. He don't need none of that extra shit because he know how to connect. He know how to engage with that woman. This is why you see men that feel like their money can get them in the door, and because of that, it created a new genre of females. And that genre of female is the females that get wet off of handbags. Man, I'm hitting some pointers, though. <laughs> because Damn. you put everything you've got into everything you do. Huh. I'm going to read it again so y'all can see I ain't just making this up. <laughs> Whatsoever thy hand find to do, do with thy might. For there's no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave without ghost. Do everything, like do your best to everything. In other words, if it's not worth putting your best into, it's probably not worth doing. You are going to die. Stop acting shocked by that. Like, stop walk dotling, doting about through life like you think you're going to live to be 900. It's not going to happen. <laughs> okay, you're going to die. That nigga let you know you're going to die. <laughs> Damn, I right. returned and saw under the sun See, that the even they had to laugh on that. If you will do your best, that nigga let you, you know. people who are faster than you. Wow. Right, you going to die. Because they didn't do their best. Right? The race, uh, I saw the race was not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. You will win in battle over people who are stronger than you. If you don't believe yes. me, ask David and Goliath. Yeah. Hmm. By the way, David practiced for Goliath on a lion and a bear. Oh, okay. See, what we do is we hide from our lions and our bears, and then we want to face our giants. Ooh, we. Damn. That's tough. And we're, we wonder why we run from the giant. You ran from the giant because you ran from the lion and you ran from the bear. Damn. Okay. Mmm. Ooh, Neither yet tough. bread to the wise. You will eat better than people who have more wisdom, more education, more degrees, and more knowledge than you. If you do your best. See, everybody can't have a degree. Everybody can't have great Socratic wisdom. 
Everybody can't be the fastest person running. Everybody can't be the strongest person in battle. But everybody can do the rest, but almost nobody does. Hmm. Y'all tracking. I can see it in your face you're tracking. Uh, no, the battle too strong, neither yet bread to the wise, neither yet riches to men of understanding. Hey, you will make more money than people who are smarter than you if you do your best. Doors open for people who do their best. Obstacles run from people who do their best. Okay. Neither yet favor to men of skill. In other words, you will find All favor facts. over, you'll win contracts over people who have more skill than you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How? Yes, sir. How? Dude, I, I, I get new clients. I get new people trying to be clients daily. Every time, every time I'm out and about, people associate me with security. And um, when they see me with my clients, I get the little little note slid in my hand. I get the extra hundred dollar bills. You know what I'm saying? And guess what? I'm probably the newest out of the guys that I know. I'm one, I'm the baby of, of some of the guys that I know. But guess what? Because of how I carry myself, <clears throat> how I go about my business, the doors are open for me at all times. I get, I got one client trying to undermine another guy, want me to take his position, but I won't take it because it's like how they did it. They try to go, they try to give me his position behind his back and that going to create bad blood, you know, if you know anything about security, they are very competitive. They all fighting over contractors, contracts and shit like that. These niggas be crazy about them contracts. And I'm not saying like where they'll see you physically, but it just is a lot of beef behind security. They all fight for these contracts. And this, especially in Miami, we talking about some serious paper to protect a lot of the, a lot of this, a lot of millionaires and billionaires here. I'm, I'm in Miami. This is a headquarter. New York and Miami, California is like headquarters for security because that's where a lot of celebrities are um, in Atlanta as well. Uh, but so, but but man, I, I just got another guy um, that worked with little 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 baby. He wanted me. He just took my number down. You know what I'm saying? He was like, man, we always here in Miami. You know what I'm saying? I be need some extra support. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm gonna get your number. And I'm like, but this happened all the time though. I got another guy, just a regular guy, but he's a regular guy who is a um well established man. And he was like, Man, you know, I I, I definitely need you, man, for some personal detail, man. And but this happened often. But guess what? When they talk about my other guy to me, when they talk about my other, you know, partner, they're like, man, we don't like him. We don't like him, you know. When when my clients, these I'm talking about clients, like we don't like him. You know, he he's a bully. You know, he a bully. We don't like him. He is a bully. And I'm like, shit, you know, do you the one hired him? You know, yeah, I gotta talk to him because you know, a lot of a lot of a lot of customers come here and they they afraid because he a bully. And I'm like, shit, hey, you know, I mean I do my best to try to talk to him, but you know, that's on y'all. You know, so what I'm saying is doors are always opening up for me in the, in the security business because I keep myself clean. I don't do drugs. I don't drink on the job. I used to sip at one of my clients job. I stopped doing that. I t my barber's like, nah, man, you can't even do that. You know, I'm like, shit, I, yeah, I just had a little sip. He was like, nah, they don't even do the sip. Don't even sip with them. Show them you professional at all times. You know, they, cause you know, when they get so comfortable with you, they want to like, you know, come and have a sip with me. Be like, nah, I don't even, so I don't even drink with them no more. You know what I'm saying? I had a drink last night at the dinner though. with One of my clients though, I had, I had a little sip, but they were trying to drink some tequila shit. I was like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So, you know, but my, the doors are always opening up for me though, because of how I go about my business. Doors are always opening up. 
You're, when you show up into an arena that you've been to before, everybody else who's in that arena, who's seen you should, before, should know, fired? oh, if this person's here, I know they're going to show up and show up. They're going to show up and shine. I am. It okay. So what do we learn from Price's Law? <laughs> because you need to drop that blunt. <laughs> average, drop the blunt, mediocrity, my boy. okay scales exponentially. That's why there's always more people who lose than there are who win. There's always a large number. Hey, let me say this. You don't have to block, drop the blunt, but understand this. You don't have to drop the blunt. Just know that you can only get as far as you can get. See, I think because so many of us we see celebrities that drink and smoke. We, in our head, we feel like, okay, so it's cool. You do know that's a different level. Like, in order to get up there and become that, the people that you may go through may not accept you drinking and smoking. Now, once you get up there, you can flip it on them. You know what I'm saying? You can start drinking and smoking once you get there. But then, like I said, going up the ladder, though, going upward might be a little challenging because they might, the, the people that you're trying to go upward through might not accept you drinking and smoking. So you don't have to stop drinking and smoking. That's your personal choice. But what I'm saying, if we're trying to go upward in life, some of the doors that we're trying to go through, they might not accept us drinking and smoking. Um, and a lot of people won't tell you that they don't accept it. You will know about how they treat you. You will know about the opportunities you get in life. Let me ask you this. Are you getting some amazing opportunities right now, drinking and smoking? And I'm saying this to everybody. Now, do they know you drink and smoke the way you do? Now, if they find out that you drink and smoke the way you do, will they pull back a little from you? We're talking about business. We're not talking about the homies. We're not talking about your girlfriend. We're talking about going upward. See, I don't know how many of y'all are trying to go upward either. But I'm speaking to say that we're trying to go upward. And I'm saying going upward. We're trying to move up in life. We're trying to increase our money. We're trying to increase our knowledge. Wealth. We're just trying to increase everything about us. The doors that you got to go through, do they know you drink and smoke the way you do? And I'm saying if they do, you think they will still fuck with you and let you come through those doors of going upward? It's what I'm trying to say. So that's why I say I'm not uh, drinking and smoking. It's not illegal. You feel me? So everybody ain't going to have an issue. But I'm saying, though, usually when you're trying to go upward, when you start trying to increase your value, there's a little restriction on drug and alcohol. As you start to get through the doors, you will see that drug and alcohol is all these motherfuckers use. But it's a different going through the doors. Tell me if you understand what I'm saying. Trying to get there is different than being there because once you there, cocaine sits on the table. <laughs> okay, let me be quiet. Number who lose and a small number who win. There's, there's a large number who just play the game, a small number who become professionals, and a smaller number than that who become stars. A smaller number than that who become superstars. And a smaller number than that who become legendary. Why? It's interesting. Uh, like, people make fun of this, and it's kind of funny, because it was, it was like a funny meme, when Allen Ivers was like, practice, practice. You talking to me about practice? practice. Bingo. That's a great practice. example. Me. Practice. You talking to me about practice. That's a great example. And then, like, it became a meme, but he was making a very good point. You shouldn't be talking to these practice. other clowns who ain't scoring any points about practice. That's a great example. Clearly, when I That's show up, example. I've already practiced. That's a great example. There are some people that don't have to Michael practice. Michael Jordan was not the most talented basketball player. He got cut from his high school basketball team. But he worked harder than anybody after that, so it would never happen again.
Hmm. See, but here's what we do. We find ourselves taking our past experiences, like uh, projecting them on the screen of our future, recreating mm. the past, think we're living in the present, and we keep repeating Groundhog mm. Day. Today looks like yesterday, and this year looks like okay, last year. Okay, This decade looks like last decade. We keep repeating the same thing. Why? Because we're not learning anything from the mistakes we made. We're not learning, any, we're not learning how to overcome by looking at our past failures and our past struggles. Let them tell us something. I made that mistake in the past. I ain't fixing to make it again. That was yesterday's mistake, baby. Right. Right. I learned the lesson. Now I'm ready to get the blessing. Mm. Mm. But if you don't learn the lesson, you get to keep on testing. Yes, sir. Talk. Talk. I like that. That's, that's, that's a bar. So what do we learn from this? Execute your execution. Work your work. Work your work because all work works. What do you mean work your work? Stop playing at the thing you want other people to think you're serious about. Mm. Stop, stop tick, sticking your toe Damn. in the water. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. That's a bar right there. I'm going to just try. That's a bar right there. My boy say run that mic. Stop. What do you mean work your work? Stop playing at the thing you want other people to think you're serious about. Mm. Stop, stop tick, sticking your toe in the water. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I'm going to just try. Try? Try is nothing but an escape hatch. It's a back door to excuse land. I'm not going to do, here's what I try mean. I'm going to try mean. I'm not going to do my best, and if it doesn't work, you'll know I tried. I tried. Mm. Work your work, because all work works. But see, work is a two-sided coin. See, my, but all work doesn't work. I've been working on this business for 15 years. It's not making me a money. All work works. It's a two-sided coin. It, it works on you, and it works for you. Mm. And what you've got to learn to do, and what I've got to learn to do, I think I've learned to do it to some degree, maybe not to the nth degree, nth degree. We have to learn to let our work work on us until we become the person for whom it can work. Mm, and I that's promise powerful. you. That's powerful. That's powerful. I mean, let me, let me let that play back again. That's powerful. I'm not going to do my best, and if mm. it doesn't work, You'll know I tried. I tried. Work your work, because all work works. But see, work is a two-sided coin. See, my, but all work doesn't work. I've been working on this business for 15 years. It's not making me a money. All work works. It's a two-sided coin. It, it works on you, and it works for you. And what you've got to learn to do, and what I've got to learn to do, I think I've learned to do it to some degree, maybe not to the nth degree, nth degree, we have to learn to let our work work on us until we become the person for whom it can work. Mm. And I promise you, if your work is not working for you, the work that it's been doing on you, you've been resisting on some level. I promise you. Because what you resist persists. But what you embrace becomes grace, and grace is a gift. Mm. That's like, execute your execution. Work! Your work. Don't play at your work. See, for me, this business thing is serious. You know why? Because there are some people out there who are struggling financially, and I was you. And God knows I looked everywhere, in every book, every seminar. I've got brothers here who know. My brother Dwayne will tell you. I was broke as a joke and ready to choke, and I was reading books on how to be a millionaire. I wasn't reading books about how to get a better job. Mm. Oh. I was reading oh. books that were going to eventually teach me how to give somebody a better job. Mm. Mm. Well, yeah, oh, he was wow. already, he was already wow. ahead of his problem. Work your work. Like, let's stop playing at work. Let's, let's decide we're going to become the best of the best because here's what's going to happen. You know, you know what I learned? 
a lot of these people, you know the guy that owns McDonald's? He didn't start getting wealthy until around 50 something. You know the guy that owned KFC? And fact check this. I think he was around 60 something. So we see a lot of people reaching their mark around 40, 50. We see people start tapping into the lessons over the years. Um, what's this guy name? The, the Warren Buffett. A large portion of his money didn't come till he was fifty something. Fact check it. Uh, I know the age is up there. Could be forty something, but I know these people was old. Basically, what I'm saying, it was older men. You know, they wasn't no twenties. Yeah, we see twenties and young bucks getting too. But I'm saying though, a lot of these multi-millionaires and billionaires started reaching a lot of their money at mid-life, and it goes to show that them giving this information, we don't have to wait mid-life to make a change in our world, to make a change in our community to make a change in our kids' lives, to make a change in our wife, husband life. We can start applying this information that these mid-life to older men so are given, and women as well. Because, you know, I have read, ran across a couple of uh, females' audio books. So we know that these people are giving this information. Somebody is paying for it, you know, whether they go to seminars, but for those of us that don't necessarily have the money yet to go to a seminar or the time, it's coming to the YouTube. It's coming to the inter internet. That's why I say, man, this internet is a, it's a hell hole, but it's only how you choosing to use it. This internet can be a savior. I learned how to, I learned how to tie my tie using YouTube. I went to a nice interview for a lot of money, and I had to wear a tie for the interview. I didn't have nobody to teach me how to tie this tie for this great job interview that was coming up. I got on YouTube and tied that tie. Was it perfect? No. But I was loved it in the interview. And you know what they loved in me for more than anything? My appearance. Here I am, a guy that was never shown how to tie a tie. I went to the number one source to learn how to tie a tie so I can go to this interview that's worth a lot of money. And Nothing I said, nothing I did was better than the way I looked it in their eyes. This is who we want to represent our corporation. We want you. The way you dress. He went so far to tell the other guys that were coming into the interview, this is how we want y'all to dress. This man right here, this gentleman, from the head to toe, this is how we want y'all to dress if y'all get hired. But I already was hired. He already was explaining that you, yeah, you, you the one. You, we want you. But y'all, for everybody that's, this is how we want y'all to dress on this job site. When you're with your clients, this is how we want y'all to dress. He said that. They just kept looking like, man, you sharp. Man, you sharp. Man, you got the shoes. You got the inside holster. You ain't flashy with your gun. Man, you sharp. Oh, yeah, we like you. You got your town. You, I could, I was just at home struggling. They don't know I was just at home struggling. Being a 30-something-year-old man not knowing how to tie a tie. But I didn't let 
the evilness of YouTube come on and say how to sing the next rap song, how to do the next dance. No, I went to this thing called YouTube to get the good of it. Because YouTube, this internet can be bad, but if you use it for the right reason, you can go get a six-figure job. You can go sell your corporation and get some new employees. You don't have to just go get a job. My bad. You can go do meetings. See, you can learn how to talk to entrepreneurs. See, this YouTube is not all bad. It's just what you're choosing to do with it. It's on you. You choosing to get on this thing called the internet, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and gossip. Waste your time. Waste your life. You're not getting ahead. You're not moving forward. You just stand in the same spot that your parent was in, following somebody else's life. Have you heard about the Kardashian? You fucking 30 some years old. You still watching that bullshit on TV? And yes, I just told you about that show I watched, The Crow Show. You know how long it's been since I watched TV? That's how I got stuck on that motherfucking show. It's been so long since I watched TV. So the moment I fucking found a TV show, I was in that bitch all fucking ten, eight or nine of them episodes. Now guess what? The show is over and I don't got nothing else to watch on TV because I don't watch TV no way. But I'm glad that little fucking show is over because that show had me watching all of them eight episodes. But I watched one episode a day. I was trying to get two in there, but it was tough to get two. Because I still had to keep track of my own life. But I did get them bitches an hour of me. But it gone off now. I don't watch that little shit. I ain't gonna lie. I was enjoying it too. Because I hadn't watched TV so long. It been so long since I watched TV, bro. And I fucking watched that damn show. And, and, and I just fucking, man, we was watching that motherfucker. Watching it, watching Damn, what's coming on? What's gonna happen next? Ooh, shit. But that motherfucker gone now. So we back off from TV for another fucking year. Because it's been a long time since I watched TV. Been a long time since I watched TV. Other than that show. Uh, of course, I watched the election shit. You know, I watched that little TV show. Hint, hint. Yeah, but, um, so, but yeah, man. This internet can be a, a dark place and it can be a place to heal. It's up to you to go about it the right way. I'm going to end it right there, man. I appreciate each and every one of y'all for tuning in, man. I'm truly grateful for the support that y'all show me. We've been on for about two hours and 30 some minutes. I think, um, what time it is? Two o'clock. I want to get some 2K in today, man. So I think I may come back later. See, can we play some 2K, man? You know what I'm saying? We ain't played 2K in about, what, five days? I ain't played 2K since... I ain't played 2K since, what, Friday? Thursday or Friday? It's been a minute since I played. It's been about five days since I played 2K. So we're going to try to get d Light going to hoop. We're going to try to... I'm going to try to get on later. I said try. We just heard what he said about trying. My boy said W screen. I was here for like 10 minutes and heard some good gems. Man, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. So I'm going to try to get back on. I appreciate y'all, man. I appreciate y'all, dog. I appreciate y'all. You know what I'm saying? I, I appreciate y'all letting me bring this type of stuff to y'all. You know, because like I said, y'all know where my heart at. If anytime y'all feel like, well, I don't want to listen to you. I'm going to go get it from the source. By all means, go get it from the source. I ain't stopping you. I'm just trying to pass it. I'm just trying to pass along the message. You know what I'm saying? So. I appreciate that y'all let me be me. You don't judge me for coming on here. You see how I'm different? That's what I'm telling you. I'm different in the 2K community. I'm not trying to be like nobody else. I'm just trying to be me. And being me is telling you that I want to play 2K, but I want us to focus on real life advances too. So if you see me blow up because of this, it say, damn, well, none of them was doing something different. I'm not trying to blow up from it. I'm just doing me. I'm just doing me. And if people support it, they support it. If people don't, they don't. But guess what? If you see me blow up because you'll be like, well, nobody else was doing that shit. I ain't seen nobody else have no damn 2K in the background. And this motherfucker had motivational stuff playing out 
Like, God damn. You know what I'm saying? So, that's what I'm saying, though. The reason you haven't blowed up from live streaming for my content creators is because you got to ask yourself, is you doing something that everybody else is doing? Or is you doing something that's so removed from, like, basketball, like you're trying to, you know what I'm saying? Like, you really trying to put together some here? or you half doing it? or you doing it one week, and then you miss 10 weeks, and you're doing it one day, then you miss four days? It don't work like that. When you're trying to blow up something, you got to be consistent. And consistent will get you over the hump. We just heard it. Work will work. Let the work work. And guess what? People are going to start gravitating to you. People are going to start searching out for your content. People are going to start falling into your hands. But you got to work the work. Let the work work. You know what I'm saying? So, man, I appreciate that, gang. I appreciate y'all rocking with me for real, for real, man. So, truly grateful. I'm going to get out of y'all way. Hope y'all have a great afternoon. I hope we doing something to build ourselves up, encourage ourselves, push ourselves forward. We can listen to these videos. You can come over here and listen to me, but you still got to put in that action. You know, one of the reasons I don't like some religious people, because all they do is talk. No action. I don't wait for God. I participate, and God see me participate, and he bless. Do I need to repeat that? I don't wait for God. I go out here and put in the work. God see me put in the work, and he help bless. He leads the way. He said, okay, I see you putting this one shoe before the other shoe, but God damn it, let me lead the way. See, I don't sit back and say, come and lead the way, God, and then pick me up too. Ah, right, carry me over there. The fuck I looking like asking God to carry me around. Nah, I get out here and work. I cut my live stream on, and God said, you cut it on, I'm going to help you talk. Boy, that goddamn anonymous 2K. God say, hit the go live button, and I'm going to do the rest. <laughs> You feel me though? You think I'm bullshit. I ain't bullshit. I'm serious as hard as that. Now I'm really serious. You have to put one foot before the other foot. And if you do that, whatever religion you believe in ain't gonna guide you the rest of the way. Come on. Man don't eat. A man don't work, a man don't eat. Come on. We gotta be real, right? How you expect to eat and you ain't putting no work out here in this world? But you say you wanna be successful. You lying to me, and you lying to yourself, man. Y'all have a blessed day. I'm going to try to come back later on today for some 2K. But if I don't, I will be back in the morning. Thank y'all for the support. Truly grateful. Y'all have a blessed afternoon. Hopefully, i see y'all later on today. Just seeing, um, I know I got to hit the gym up. So I got to see how long. I'm probably going to be in the gym by two hours. So it's just however, how this gym session go. But let me know if I'll be back uh, later on today, man. Thank y'all for the support. Um, if I don't come back this afternoon, I'm in this evening. I'll see y'all in the morning. Thank y'all. Y'all have a blessed day.